As the nights grow longer and the weather worsens, many of us retreat inside as much as possible until the spring. This is no more evident than at the coast, where once busy beaches lay empty, and the seas, once filled with swimmers and sailing boats, become a mass of white-tipped waves. But spare a thought to those who have no choice but to venture out in such conditions. Among them is the men and women, the RNLI, who have gone out to save those in peril at sea since 1824. Among those who have taken up this task, all for little or no pay, a select few have gained a lasting recognition they deserve. Among them is Henry George Blogg of Cromer, whose astonishing 57-year career would turn him into a local living legend. Henry Blogg was born on the 6th of February, 1876, to Ellen Blogg, in a cottage in New Street on the cliff tops, just across from Cromer Pier. He was fatherless for the first few years of his life and suffered stigma of being illegitimate that was prevalent at the time. He was raised by his grandmother before his mother married John Davis in 1881, whose father was the current coxswain of Cromer Lifeboat. Like all young men who grew up living on the coast, it was inevitable that Henry's life would revolve around the sea in some way, but this close relationship was a real driving force that got him onto the lifeboats. Henry would do well in school and was a bright child. He was top of his class in Goldsmith School Cromer, but he never really took to sports and suffered bullying due to this. As was the general custom at the time, his education was short. He left school at age 11 and began work on his family's crab boat. His time on board would be far more important to his future than anything he'd learn in a classroom. Over the course of seven years, he was taught how to use oar and how to sail. The dangers of the powerful currents and tides, where the hidden rocks and sandbanks lay under the waves, how the wind could turn calm water into deadly breakers in a matter of minutes, and all the states of weather that had long earned the seas of Cromer the nickname the Devil's Throat, as well as all manners of seamanship. At age 18, he was ready to join his stepfather on the lifeboats. He would join the lifeboats as a crewman in 1894 would have to wait a year before being called out on a rescue. Once the rescues did begin though, he would rise up quickly, and it wasn't long until he was second coxswain on board the Louisa Hartwell under the command of Jimmy Harrison. He would act as second coxswain until 1909 when poor health forced Jimmy to retire and Henry took his position as first coxswain, a position he would hold for the rest of his career. Away from the lifeboat, Henry was still a crab fisherman, and as Cromer was a popular tourist site at the time in spring and summer, he ran a small deck chair and beach hut rental company for some extra money. Henry's first truly astonishing rescue would come at the height of the First World War. The winter of 1916 into 17 had been bowed all over with soldiers freezing to death in their trenches on the Western Front. In North Norfolk, the coast was battered by some of the worst weather it had ever seen. It was just after midnight on the 9th of January 1917, when the Cromer lifeboat Louisa Hartwell got the call to go out to the aid of a Greek ship, the Pyrin, that was foundering in bad weather. This was a time pre-motor-powered lifeboats. Instead, they relied on sails and the strength of their crew using oars to reach their destination. It must be remembered, this was not a crew of mostly youngsters either. All of the young men from the crew were away in uniform. Henry was among the youngest left, aged 40. Most of the crew were in their 50s or 60s. Despite their determination, their age was beginning to show. It had taken 40 men, including soldiers, to launch the lifeboat. Despite their age and the odds, Henry and his crew rode through the breakers some far larger than their lifeboat, in hail and sleet against a 55 mile an hour wind, risking capsizing for two hours to reach the Pyron and successfully took a crew off, taking 22 of them back to Cromer's beach. They were in the process of unloading the rescued crew and beginning to pull their boat from the sea and call it a night, when out to sea there was a heavy explosion heard above the crashing waves. The Swedish vessel, the Fernabo, had struck a naval mine in the dark and had been blown in half. Sixteen of her crew had made it to a lifeboat and were attempting to save themselves. But as they neared the beach, they were caught by a heavy wave and capsized. While Henry and the crew began to reset their lifeboats on the runners to launch again, a group of onlookers, led by a private Stuart Holmes, formed a human chain, walking into the water and passing the 16 men down the chain to safety. With the lifeboat reset, they launched to try and save those still trapped on the stricken vessel. But the strength of the waves forced them back to shore almost immediately, forcing them to reset and try again. This would happen three more times before they were finally able to put to sea. Despite the weather, a huge crowd had gathered on the cliff to watch the intrepid lifeboat men. By the time they reached the rest of the Fernabo's crew and brought them to shore, Henry and his men had been working flat out for almost 24 hours. Henry was awarded his first RNLI gold medal for his actions, the highest award the RNLI can give. The rest of the crew received bronze medals for their actions, as did Private Holmes. Henry's dogged determination would years later be put down to his stubbornness by his nephew. He'd never give in. If he started the job, it had to be done. 1923 would bring Cromer their first motorised lifeboat, and once again, Henry would soon become quickly adapted sailing it. Henry was awarded the Empire Gallantry Medal in 1924 
on the 100th anniversary of the RNLI by the king. He would also be awarded a gold watch, which he later gifted to the people of Cromer, and each of his crew would receive a silver watch for a rescue pulled off on the Haysborough Sands. His Nats Gold Medal was earned in 1927, during the rescue of the Dutch tanker, the SS Georgia, that had broken in half on the Haysborough Sands, saving the lives of 15 men. Henry would be awarded the silver medal by the RNLI for the rescue of 30 crew and the ship's dog from the Italian vessel SS Montenevoso in 1932. The Cromer lifeboat was originally sent out with a number of tugboats, hoping to refloat the ship, but this was not to be. The ship soon began to break up and it was clear that a rescue was needed. The crew came off easy enough, but a number of the officers refused to leave their vessel, with the captain declaring, My radio is all right. If I need assistance, I will send for you. Several hours later, a message was sent to the Monte Nuoso. When no answer came, Blog and his men were out again, but found no sign of any of them. In reality, they had left in one of the ship's own lifeboats and had been picked up by a passing fishing trawler. This was, of course, not known to the Chroma crew, and a search of the ship began. As they did, they heard whimpering coming from one of the cabins. Investigating, they found two dogs, a St. Bernard and a Terrier. Sadly, as they tried to get them out, the Terrier panicked and ran deeper into the ship, never to be seen again. But the Bernard and a couple of cage birds were saved. In all, the Chroma lifeboat men had spent 52 hours at sea, saving all they could. The Italian captain gave the dog to Henry as a thank you present. He would rename him Monty, and he lived until 1935. The rescue would also gain Henry the K-9 Defence League Silver Medal for the rescue of the dog, and the Italian government presented him with a silver medal for services to their citizens. The 1930s would bring many rescues and many challenges for Henry, all he would overcome with his normal resilience. His next silver medal was earned during a rescue from the tanker the Sepoy, which ran aground in 1933. And as mentioned in a previous video, he would take part in the rescue of a Spanish Republican crew from the SS Canterbury, who was sunk by an attack from a nationalist commerce raider off the Norfolk coast in 1938. Despite his accolades and awards, Henry remained a very humble man. He was also a teetotaler who never smoked or drank. He was willing to talk to anyone, especially holidaymakers to the area, which was about the only time he'd let any hint of his celebrity status slip. The outbreak of the Second World War would bring far more work for the lifeboatmen of Cromer. The sea around North Norfolk was a treacherous bit of coast at the best of times, but with the addition of countless sea mines, they soon found themselves called out 150 times, saving 488 lives, more than any other station in the country. October 1939 would bring the rescue of the SS Mount Laid, a Greek cargo ship and another victim of the sandbanks. Once again, after several hours of battling the waves, this time 19 miles offshore, all 29 crew were taken off. Unfortunately, one of whom died later that day from injuries sustained while climbing down a rope ladder to the lifeboat. Henry would earn the British Empire Medal in 1941. Also around this time, it was decided that the Empire Gallantry Medal he was awarded in 1924 would be substituted for the George Cross, the second highest gallantry award in the UK honours system, for acts of greatest heroism or the most conspicuous bravery in circumstances of extreme danger. The 5th of August 1941 would bring a chaotic night. Six vessels from a convoy heading south would run into trouble around the sandbanks. The rescue would take both of Cromer's lifeboats, as well as others from Sheringham and Galston, fighting their way through gale force winds. But in the end, 88 lives were saved and Cox and Blog was awarded his third gold medal. Not all rescues would go without incident, none more than the rescue of the crew from the SS English trader who had run aground in bad weather of Hammond's Knoll Sandbank of Haysborough in October 1941 after falling behind its convoy and being attacked by a German aircraft. Blog and his crew launched at 8.15am and it would take over two hours to make the journey to the vessel. And by the time they arrived there, three members of the trader's crew had already lost their lives to the raging sea. As the lifeboat was getting ready to come alongside, disaster struck. A large wave crashed hard into their port side, throwing five men, including Henry Blogg, into the water. Believe it or not, despite his life spent around water, saving others' lives, Blogg couldn't swim. Crewman William H. Davis took the ship's wheel and steered towards the men struggling in the water. Due to the rough seas, it would take 25 minutes to get all five men back on board. Sadly, one of the five, Edward Allen, fell unconscious and died shortly afterwards due to hypothermia and heart failure. Despite the loss of a man, the Cromer lifeboat tried again and again to reach the trapped crew until 3pm when on the point of exhaustion they were forced to pull off and make for the nearest port of Great Yarmouth. While Henry and his men rested, other crews from Yarmouth and Galston took over the rescue attempt, but with no success. 3am the following morning, Henry woke his crew. They were going back to try again. The wind had dropped and the sea was calmer. They rescued the remaining 44 crew with relative ease and brought them back to the safety of Great Yarmouth before making their way home to Cromer. The next day, the SS English trader fully sank beneath the waves. 
Henry would be awarded his fourth silver medal for his actions, and the rest of the crew, including Edward Allen, the bronze. Lifeboats at this time were a very close-knit community, with many members from the same family serving together. As you can see from this list of crew of 1941, deaths, such as that of Edwards, hit them hard. By the end of the Second World War, the Cromo lifeboat had been called out to take part in everything, from saving the crews of stricken ships, to rescuing airmen who had been downed in the sea, to recovering the bodies from a torpedo attack on the HMS Vortigan. Much of this done in secret, to keep up civilian morale. Henry became a national hero in his own lifetime, but he was reluctant to make too much of his celebrity. He'd always talk up the action of his crews or passing his off as simply doing the job. The many medals he won spent far more time in his bedside drawer than they ever did on his chest. In his whole life, he only ever gave one speech and it was reported to be a very short one. Even with his own crew, he was a rather private man. The custom after a rescue was to go down the pub to celebrate, but not Henry. He'd always go home to his quiet cottage where his wife Annie who he'd married in October 1901, and their two children were waiting for him with dry clothes and hot soup. Unfortunately, his home life wasn't as idyllic as it may sound. Both of his children would die young. His son Jack was just 18 months old when he did, and his daughter Anne, affectionately known as Queenie, passed away aged 27, making him an even more quiet and reserved man. It was definitely commented by his crews that on board the lifeboats after her death, his ability to shout and swear at them faded to nothing. He was still in command, but he was never the same man again. But it would be the death of his wife in 1950 that would just about break his heart. Henry retired from the RNLI in 1947, aged 74, 10 years after the usual retirement age. He'd been saving lives at sea for 53 years, 38 of them as coxswain. He'd been on 387 rescues and saved 873 lives. Not bad for a man who lived his whole life in the same town. His nephew, Henry Davis, who had also been thrown into the sea during the rescue of the English trader in 1941, would take over as coxswain of the Cromer lifeboat, a position he held until 1976. A new lifeboat, originally launched in 1945 under the name Millie Walton, would be renamed the Henry Blog and christened on the 7th of August 1948 and would remain in service in Cromer until 1966. Even after his retirement, when the signal went for the lifeboat to launch, Henry would be there watching from the pier with them in spirit. His popularity was really shown. When the RNLI held a retirement ceremony for him, thousands turned up. It was here he gave his one and only public speech. Henry Blogg passed away on the 13th of June, 1954, aged 78. He is buried in Holt Road Cemetery, Cromer, along with his wife and daughter. In 1962, Anglia Television created a 42 minute long documentary about his life called For Those in Peril. A link to the film to the East Anglian Film Archives can be found in the description below. Cromer will never and should never forget their local hero, who has often been referred to as the greatest ever lifeboatman. I'm sure other places would dispute this claim, but what is undeniable, he is still the most decorated. A George Cross, Empire Gallantry Medal, British Empire Medal, seven lifeboat medals, three of them gold, four silver, Queen's Coronation Medal, Italian Government Silver Medal, and K9 Defence League Medal, and at least one long service medal, which only came to light in 2014. A museum dedicated to him and the Cromer lifeboat opened in 2006, the Henry Blog Lifeboat Museum. In 2008, a huge local appeal raised £7,000 to try and buy a number of items at auction. Two watches, including the gold watch from 1924 that had belonged to Henry, and a handcrafted book given to him as a retirement present. They were successfully bought and can now be found in the museum. Under normal conditions, the museum is open Tuesday to Sundays, February to November, but times change throughout the year, so if you wish to visit, please check before making a journey. They offer everything from displays of Henry's medals, interviews with the crew, and even being able to try on some of the kit they wore. It's a great place for all the family, and a link to the museum's website can be found in the description. The story of Henry's life has also been covered in several books, such as Henry Blog of Cromer by Cyril Jolly, and a bronze bust of Henry stands overlooking the sea, just as he did time and time again. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. All the information and pictures used can be found in the description below. Please feel free to subscribe and like if you wish. This was Henry Blog, the greatest of lifeboatmen, or as Henry would have insisted on this being called, Henry Blog, crab fisherman. And this was a little bit of history.